Coming up in Democast Media, I'm going to demonstrate how to create animated annotations in Camtasia. G'day, Paul here from Democast Media, helping you get the picture and make an impact with visual communication. On this channel, I show you how to use screen capture and video tools to improve your marketing your training, communication, and teamwork. If that sounds like you, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay up to date. Today, I'm answering a viewer question from Forsten. Could you please tell me how to select a specific area with that red stroke or border? And Forsten's referring to the pop-out zoom effect video where I'm using an animated rectangle just to highlight different parts of the video. So Forsten, thank you for your question. I'm going to show you how I did that and three different ways that you can animate your annotations in your next, in your next Camtasia project. Okay, so we've got a Camtasia project here. I have my screen recording. Uh, I did a walkthrough of a platform and how to use it. And what I want to do is to recreate uh, two of those animations that I did and a bonus one and I'm gonna select the area around that portion of the screen. So this is an annotation that we're using. So you wanna head on over to annotations. You've got a few different options here. The one that we're using, the first one up, is sketch motion callouts. These already have an animation attached to it. So because we're dealing with a, um, a thing here with a straight edge, I'm gonna use this one, which is a straighter edge uh, sketch motion call out. So you, you drag that onto the canvas or the timeline. And I, when you do it on the canvas, you see you've got those little handles. You're gonna have to resize this so it, it fits the, the area that you want. So um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more on that canvas so you can see the detail there and pan across. So uh, we've got a good view. Perfect. So you can see those handles there. That's where that sketch motion um, call out is. If we come down to the timeline, uh, you'll see that if I hover over it, the duration is five seconds. So if I just press play here, so that um, automatically creates that effect. It highlights a certain part of the screen. However, it's not the, the shape or the size that I'm wanting. So those handles, so to be able to resize this, you can hover over one of those handles and drag it so it covers where you want. So I'm just gonna move the, the playhead here so it's a little bit easier to see. I'm gonna zoom back out again and move this over to around here. It's got a marker there to help me out. Okay, great. So if I press play again, great. So. I had resized it before and I'm gonna adjust it. So to move this around, you just hover over that call out and move it around on the screen. I'm gonna drag out those handles a little bit more. So it's a, a bit further around the edges there. And, and if you need to make some fine tuning on that, um, you can simply click the call out, press control and use the arrows like this just for demonstration. So I'll, I'll keep it like that. So I'm, I'm satisfied with this. So if I go back to the beginning now and hit the space bar, so that now highlights the section of the, the screen that I want. Now I can ch change up the properties by clicking on the call out, going here to the properties panel, and you can increase or decrease the thickness. And you can also make the draw time go really fast, like so. Like that, so you can barely see that, that animation happen, or you can, you can drag that out further. So that's one way that you can animate a call out and draw attention to a certain part of the video. The second way in which I did that in, in the video that Forsen's referring to, I used a shape. So I'll, coming back to annotations, you have the shapes option right there. And you know you can choose different styles. Um, abstract, if we just go with this one, you drag the shape again onto the canvas and you can already see the shape there with the handles. So I'm gonna drag that out. It's gonna fit around um, fairly snugly on that area. You notice the color doesn't really go 
uh, it doesn't really give you much contrast against the white background there. So again, if you click on the annotation, look at properties, I'm going to change the color of that outline. So on that drop down arrow, there's a few ways you can do that. So you can just choose one of these colors on the palette here. So you can do that one. And that certainly does stand out for sure. Just chose the outline there. I want to choose the color. So you can do that one. You can do green. You could do one of these ones and change the um, the spectrum there. So it's more of a, a red. So those certainly will stand out. Uh, I'm going to choose a, the color picker and I'm going to choose that. It's kind of like a blue. And I think that sets it off against the green there and, and the white. Um, however, if I go to the start and I press play, so it just kind of comes out there. Um, it kind of is a bit slightly jarring. So if you want to do a smooth animation on this, um, and I'm just conscious, you know, this isn't perfectly rounded, but just to show you how to animate this, is there's a number of ways you could do that. But the simplest way, and I think the way I had done it in this video, I went to transitions and I just did a fade. Drag that onto your timeline, like so. Press play. So that comes in a lot more smoother. Um, something I had failed to do with the first um, transition was the, the length of it. So you can make it longer or shorter. So if I zoom in on the timeline, and I mentioned this before, if you hover over the of if you hover over it, you'll see that the duration is five seconds. So I want to make that to roughly three seconds. You you go here to the end, um, click and drag it, and you can reduce the length. And you'll see in that little rectangle box that the duration is basically three seconds in length now. So you can re, you can adjust the the duration, the the dimensions of that shape and you can make it go in smoothly and it will go out again smoothly. So if I scrub along and press play again. So that's how you can do that and choose the colors that it actually matches uh, against the platform that you're using, not just a random color or random effect, but something that's going to be easy on the eye. The third and final way that you can use in an animated annotation is if you go back here and you can use a blur. I really enjoy using this blur. So Spotlight is another way, and I've used it traditionally with these particular um, uh, screencast recordings. You drag it onto this canvas and it immediately, you can see what this um, animation does. Use the handles to spread it out, change the dimensions. And as the name suggests, it works like a spotlight. Anything within here is lit up, everything else around it is made darker. You can change the intensity over here in the properties panel, make the edges darker or lighter. So we'll keep it around about that 50% intensity there. Um, similar to the shape though, if you press play, it just comes at you there with no warning. So um, again, you can just go back to transitions, use the fade, drag it onto the timeline. And I know that no, I don't need this to be five seconds. I'll make this back down to roughly three seconds or so. And this is how it looks. And that's a third way in which you can animate an annotation. So the reason you want to be aware of these uh, small little tricks is to help guide your viewer uh, and to, I guess, hold their hand in a way. If you're showing them a process, you want to make that uh, as easy as possible. That reduces the cognitive load on someone trying to learn a process for the first time. So highlighting in that fashion by animating your annotations is a really great thing to use in all of your, your tutorials. They don't need to be very complicated, but those are three ways in which you can effectively animate your annotations. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to get more content just like this. And Thank you again, Forsen. If you have a question like his or anything else around Camtasia or screen capture, video tools, screen share, video conferencing, please leave those questions in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.